From natural disasters to many, many man-made ones, here are the top 10 darkest photos from history that will shock you. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the fire. This is a photo that comes to us from 2003 at the Station Nightclub in Rhode Island, and it shows the band Great White as they perform. While this seems like just a regular photo that someone took on their Motorola Razor, what ensued shortly after this photo was taken is absolutely tragic. Basically, as the band performed, there were some pyrotechnics that were set off, and while this was meant to be a spectacular display, it only ended up in disaster. The fireworks ended up setting all of the flammable acoustic foam in the walls and ceiling on fire, and within one minute, everything that was combustible was up in flames. Within two minutes, the entire club was fully engulfed in black smoke, and people were having trouble finding exits. In the end, this fire took the lives of 100 people, and another 230 were injured as a result. It has gone down in US history as one of the worst and most deadly nightclub fires. In our number 9 spot today, we have the core. This photo shows a physicist named Harold Agnew, and while this looks like a relatively normal, non-threatening photo, what he has in his hand is truly devastating. Harold is holding the nuclear core of what was nicknamed the Fat Man Atomic Bomb. This means that Harold is holding the nuclear core of the atomic bomb that was later dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The immediate blast of course took many lives, but so did the long-term effects of the bomb like radiation illnesses and that sort of thing. It's crazy to look at a photo like this because it seems so perfectly normal when he literally has a life-changing, world-ending device in the palm of his hand. Also, I don't think I could ever hold something like that. Not only would I just not want to, but I don't think I could even get near it for fear of something going wrong. In our number 8 spot today, we have the eruption. This is a photo that is showing Mount Pinatubo, which is located in the Philippines on June 15, 1991. That is the day that this volcano erupted into what would be the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Certainly impressive, also extremely terrifying. This photo shows the pyroclastic flow full of hot gas and rock being flung into the air. Eruptive activity in the volcano first started on April 2nd of that year, which prompted researchers to set up seismographs in the area. By June, the volcano was having a group of progressively shallower eruptions before, on June 12th, the volcano had its first spectacular eruption, which sent an ash column 19 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Additional smaller explosions continued on June 13th, which then led to some intense seismic activity. After more highly gas-charged magma reached the surface, on June 15th, the volcano once again exploded, this time sending the cloud of ash 40 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash and pumice blanketed the surrounding areas, and pyroclastic flows filled what were once deep valleys with fresh volcanic deposits. It is truly magnificent and extremely powerful, and this photo shows just that. In our number 7 spot today, we have post-war. This is a photo that is said to have been taken in 1946, just after the end of the Second World War. Story goes that the person in this photo is a soldier who had just returned home from war, which would already be difficult and challenging enough, but as he returned home, he came to hear the news that unfortunately, despite his survival, his family had lost their lives during the war. There is no doubt about the impact that either world war had on the world, and how the impact doesn't stop once the war is over. These wars changed the course of history, and they changed people's lives forever. This is definitely a difficult photo to look at, and it's an eerie reminder of those dark times. In our number 6 spot today, we have the disguise. Speaking of the Second World War, as it began to come to a close, many of the Germans who were involved in all of the many, many violations of human rights began to flee or try and hide or disguise themselves for fear of being persecuted. One of those was, of course, the worst of them all, Hitler himself. This photo, or rather series of photos, was created by the US government as an attempt to document the many ways that he could have disguised himself in order to escape being recognized and captured. At the time, the fear of him being able to escape responsibility and go on living his life abroad was very real. I mean, there have been others who actually did manage to do just that, and that is exactly the reason for these photos. There is also something kind of interesting and bizarre about what happens when we take away the features of his that we know him by. In the end, he didn't escape and go on to live abroad, but he did escape being held responsible before the world. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Titanic. We all know the story of the Titanic. I mean, it's one of the most famous in history, and this photo comes from just before the historic iceberg encounter. On April 10th, 1912, the Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage, heading from Southampton over to New York City. The ship took a couple of stops along the way, one in France, one in Ireland, before setting off for the United States officially, and somewhere along the beginning part of its journey, someone was able to snap a photo of the ship as 
it sailed. It's not clear exactly where this photo was taken, but it is thought to be the last photo taken of the ship before its tragic end. Considering it was only four days after the ship set sail that it hit the iceberg, it is likely that this photo came not too long before the terrible day. In our number four spot today, we have the lipstick killer. This is a photo that comes to us from December 10th, 1945. If looking at this image gives you a shudder down your spine, that absolutely makes sense, as it was written by a terrible person known as the lipstick killer. This photo is an image of a note he left written on the wall at one of his crime scenes. The photo comes from the apartment of Francis Brown, as just before he wrote this message, he took her life. After this message was left, he ended up taking the life of one other person because he was finally caught by the police six months later. The message scrawled in the photo reads, For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. It is an absolutely chilling note with a horrific backstory. In our number three spot today, we have bad politics. This is a photo that shows the former first lady, Rosalind Carter, and you may or may not be wondering who that man next to her is. And to that I say, my friends, that is the horrible, horrible monster that is John Wayne Gacy, aka the Killer Clown. This photo was taken at a Polish Constitution Day celebration in Chicago in 1978, which is the same year that Gacy was arrested for his crimes, so at the point this photo was taken, he had already taken the lives of at least 20 people. The reason he was there and was able to meet the First Lady is because he was not only the worst of the worst, he also somehow became the Democratic Precinct Captain in the Chicago suburbs in the 1970s, and he was the Marshal of the Polish Parade. The picture is even signed, quote, to John Gacy, best wishes, Rosalind Carter. It's terrible. I hate it so much. I feel very bad for anyone who had to meet him. In our number two spot today, we have the first day. This is a photo that shows Dorothy Count Scoggins as she joined her new school. What should be a perfectly normal activity was certainly anything but for Dorothy as she was the first black person to attend Harding High School in Charlotte, North Carolina, which was previously an all-white school. After the passing of the Purcell Plan in 1956, there were 40 students who applied for transfers, and Dorothy was one of four who was accepted. This photo clearly shows that although Though small steps were being taken within the law to prevent segregation, there were no steps being taken within the students. As Dorothy just tries to get an education, you can see her peers clearly trying to disturb her peace. After four days of this kind of treatment, Dorothy's parents ended up withdrawing her from the school over fears for her safety. These images, however, were seen around the world. This photo acts as quite the reminder for where we were really not all that long ago. In our number one spot today, we have the Challenger crew. This is a photo that was taken taken of the clearly very excited Challenger crew as they walked down the ramp ready to head off on their mission. The crew even included 37-year-old Krista McAuliffe, who was a high school social studies teacher. She had won a spot on this mission through a program with NASA called the Teacher in Space Program, and she had trained diligently for months in order to be the first non-military person in space. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger mission proved to be fateful just 73 seconds after liftoff. Two rubber O-rings failed because of the cold temperatures of the morning, and on live television, the world watched as the spacecraft broke apart and plunged into the ocean, sadly taking the lives of everyone on board. It is an absolutely tragic event, made even more chilling by this final photo. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.